Howdy everybody, today we are going to learn what to do to build your first aid kit for the road. Things to consider when you're building your kit. They're dependent on various things. Location, mode of travel, are you in a motorcycle or are you on a big rig? Other things to consider are how many people this kit needs to serve, the length of trip that you're taking, and the training of the person that's who's going to be using that that kit. Is this going to be a bare minimum for somebody with, with basically no training? Or is somebody that is a paramedic or a doctor going to be using that kit? It's all things that you need to consider. But you all start out with the very bare minimum, absolute bare minimum for your kit. And a lot of times that's an IFAC, individual first aid kit, which has tourniquets, rolled gauze, lots of gauze pads to stop bleeding, scissors, tape or Coban or vet wrap, and a headlamp. Headlamp so you can see what you're doing. You can put that all in a very small container. And there's different ways to do this. Some people say make three kits. Have your boo-boo kit, which is your band-aid bag that you are just going to if you have a little boo-boo, and then have your trauma or your extreme blood stopping kit and then have what's called a base camp first aid kit. And that's how you got your medications in it, and all the things that you would use if you're sick as opposed to injured. If you're on a motorcycle, obviously you don't wanna have these three big kits. So you're gonna go with a more small individual first aid kit. And when you build that, you can just build it into sections where you've got like a trauma section, a trauma section, and like a medication section. And those things all go into one nice tiny little kit that you can strap onto something. The type of case that you use is gonna be very dependent on how you're gonna be carrying this. Again, that's gonna be so dependent on whether you're in a motorcycle, a big rig, or anything in between. So let's go to a, a slightly larger kit. All you're doing with these larger kits is taking that very base that you had and you're building upon that because you have more space or you have more people or you have an environment that you're going into that is more likely to cause injury or illness. So you go from your basic and you just build on it. In this kit, more suitable for a vehicle, you've got all of your boo-boo stuff, all of your band-aids or your little boo-boo kit down in here. That's where you're gonna go first most likely that's what you're gonna use most. A little first aid spray. And then as you open your kit, you're building up from there. You've got gloves in here. Now you've got your trauma. So again, your two tourniquets, gauze, or in this case, in this kit, I have an old military compress bandage. Hemostatic gauze is the type that clots the blood is a good thing to have but it's not absolutely necessary. It's still kind of expensive, so it's not something you have to have in your rig. Okay, this is the next level that you're gonna use. Your boo-boos, now you're bleeding more. You can have a next section, which in this kit, I've got some things people might not have. I'm allergic to bees, so I have my EpiPens in here. We've had people on our travels that are diabetic, so I've got sugar in here. Things that, again, you're going dependent on your travel. Or do we have people that have certain medical issues that I need to cover if I'm in charge of covering that with my kit? Eye wash, again, this is the Coban, which I generally use in place of tape. And we're gonna take a little sideline right here and talk about flagging your tape. What does flagging your tape mean? So tape, I'm sure you guys have all tried to find the edge of a piece of tape and you can't find it. This Coban, when you need it in a hurry, this is not flagged. So you're gonna be sitting there trying to find the end of the tape all day and you're never gonna find it. So if you take the time when you first get a first aid kit and you open the tape up or you open up the, the vet wrap or the Coban 
and you just fold the edge of the tape so that it is flagged. And now you can easily find it. Just little tricks like that that are gonna make things a lot easier when you're in the field and you need this stuff right now. So as we progress on in building our kit, and we've started with the basics, and now we're adding things on as our space and circumstances permit, um, you want to have an airway section. So airway is some sort of pocket mask or CPR mask. This is also based on training. So an OPA or oral pharyngeal airway or an NPA, nasal pharyngeal airway. And again, these are based on training. If you don't know how to use these things or somebody you're with doesn't how to know how to use these slightly more advanced items in a kit, then don't put them in. You don't need these. First, the pocket mask, that you need because you're protecting yourself from other people's germs. So you've got your trauma taken care of. You've got some of your medication in your airway taken care of. Splinting, so you've got another layer here. Some of the really good things to carry are there, everybody would know them as SAM splints. And they're basically just padded moldable metal. And you can wrap these around any sort of break. You can turn them into hand splints, leg splints. Yes, you can use a stick. Yes, you can use all tent poles. You can use all these things, but these moldable splints are very inexpensive. You can mold them in almost any position. And a lot of times I consider these also to be a critical use to put in an IFAC. Um, some people do, some people don't, because they feel, well, I, I can always make a splint out of what I have on hand. Um, but these you don't have to think about. They're just there. You don't have to go and hunt something down. They're easy to use and they're light. More rolled gauze. And then if you have room, so especially in the overlanding community, we are not on a city street. We are out in the boonies. So how are we gonna get that person from the point that they have injured themselves to a place where an ambulance or a helicopter or some sort of vehicle can then get them out? If they've fallen down a cliff or if you're way back where the ambulance can't get, how do we get that person to some place where they can get out? And they now sell fairly compress compressible little litters, little hand litters that you can put a person on. They've got a whole bunch of different handholds on them so that a lot of people can help carry that person out. Now this is not something that you're gonna have in an IFAC. It's not something that you're gonna have on your motorcycle, but as we build up, it is something that you can have in a larger kit that you're keeping with you in a bigger vehicle. So as we progress up, now we're looking at a base camp first aid kit. So this is the kit that you're going to have to primarily move towards treating illnesses that you might have on a longer trip, that you might have whether you're traveling every day or whether you're at one place for a long period of time. This is gonna take care of your medications, but you also want trauma gear in there as well in case the vehicles that are carrying the trauma kit or the IFACs are out on a, a day trip on the road. So this is best served being in a box, something waterproof, something that is going to be able to be in a vehicle and easily recognizable, but can still have stuff put on it and not be broken. So I use a Pelican case for this. It's just what works best for us in our setup. And this particular kit was set up for a Great Divide trip. So it's got a lot of stuff in it to treat quite a few people. This can be pared down, obviously. Again, as we talked about how we build our kits, how many people is it gonna take? How long is it gonna go? But this one was for a long trip with a lot of people. So what we have in this type of kit is up here we have all of our basic medications. So an, an Advil or you know, basically an anti-inflammatory, Tylenol for fevers, both of them for pain. Then you want aspirin. 
You gotta remember with aspirin and those type of things, you can't use them on kids and they are blood thinners. So if you have an injury that you're bleeding, you don't wanna take aspirin. But you wanna carry aspirin because especially if you're kind of part of the older community, if you're feeling chest pain, you wanna take some aspirin. Here we have stuff to take care of people with low blood sugar and just a variety of things. Nosebleeds, nosebleeds are big, especially if you're in an area that has very dry air. So some Afrin and those nasal plugs that you can jam up your nose and stop that. Some good old Ricola and cough drops. So this kit's kind of cool. It comes with this tray system already in the, the Pelican box and it pops open and you have more places to store cool things. So up here we have some hydrocortisone because bugs are real and they like to chew on me. You've got some sinus medication some anti-diarrheal, um, very important when you're on the road, and the basically something to soothe your, soothe your throat if you have a sore throat. So basically, this kit is for my training and experience. So I have some Benadryl in here that's injectable because I'm allergic to bees, and lots of other people are as well. Some motion sickness type of medication, and some other things in here. If you're gonna be out for long periods of time and you're gonna be out in the deep boonies, just the cheapo tooth repair kits. So if you lose a crown or you lose a filling, these are very inexpensive and super easy to do. So you're not losing your trip because your filling fell out. You can just put a temporary filling in there. I have a staple gun in here. Again, this is a, a, a level of training if you have somebody with you that knows how to use these. I mean, you would only use these, people think, you know, oh, I'm gonna suture up the wound or I'm gonna staple up the wound. You really only wanna use these on head wounds so that you're just really having difficulty getting the bleeding to stop. Otherwise, just use gauze and that rolled gauze to get that stopped. Flip that back up. In this particular kit, again, I've recreated a lot of the trauma stuff in case that stuff is out on the rig and we've got a base camp. So here again, we have a splint. We've got a military combat dressing. Again, allergic to bees. So if you have a prescription and if you're going out into the boonies and you've got anybody that all that has any sort of life threatening allergies, an EpiPen is a really good thing to have and when you talk to your doctor, a lot of times it's easy to get a prescription for that if they know what you're doing and that you might be out with people that have allergies. Glucagon, not something you're gonna see in most kits. Our youngest daughter is a type one diabetic, so I carry glucagon for diabetic emergencies. So then just some other things in here, more along the lines of medications, as well as up here, again, Benadryl, eye wash, wound, clear, wound cleaning. This is just, and it's when you build these kits, if you do this compartmentalization, it makes it easy. You're not opening this kit and having just a yard sale of stuff inside of it. You can get these little, these little packs in here, and you can write on there, this is for general boo-boo when wound care. So in here, you've got all of your Band-Aids, you've got all of your gauze, your wound spray, everything you would need, tape, finger dressing, everything that you would need to take care of little boo-boos or medium boo-boos. Then you've got the major bleed bag. And in there are all the things that we talked about earlier with an IFAC. There's a tourniquet, trauma shears, a big dressing. A lot of people like to refer to these as Israeli dressings. And they're just big compresses with stretchy that wraps around that lets you do a pressure dressing. Tourniquets. And tape 
vet wrap. Airway bag, so same thing as in here. We've got a, a mask, a CPR mask or shield, OPAs, NPAs. So everything is in a nice little compact unit that you can just go, oh, somebody's not breathing. I need to grab the compact unit that is airway so I can help them breathe. We were out for a long time, so again, medication stuff that's gonna help you extend your trip, stay on your trip, or at least feel comfortable until you can get to a higher level of care, get to a clinic. So good old NyQuil. Hand wipes. Now this is one of those things, these are vitals, a vitals bag. This is not a necessary thing unless you know how to use it. You will certainly be able to have a base camp first aid kit without any of these items, but blood pressure cuff, stethoscope, thermometer, and a pulse ox so that you can see how much oxygen is in that person's blood. If you know how to use these things, you have somebody that knows how to use these things, great. If not, this is not a necessary thing. Now, one thing to consider with whether or not you have these things that you don't necessarily know how to use in your kit is the advent of telemedicine. So we now have the ability with our GPSs and a lot of other things to remotely contact people of a higher medical authority. So you may want to keep these things in there if you are going on a trip that is putting you way out because you may be able to get assistance in using them. They may ask if this person that's having trouble breathing, what's their pulse ox? And you're like, well, I don't really know how to use this, but this person can talk me through it. So just something to consider. And then gloves, rubber gloves, and something to vomit in. So that's your base camp first aid kit. And as you can see, we've just done a progression from the very, very basics up to bigger rig, bigger trip, more people, up to lots of rigs, lots of people, lots of space that this takes up, and more things that you can treat. This is you're only gonna be treating severe bleeding um, and a little few Band-Aids. This, you can treat more things, and obviously this is like your medicine cabinet at home. All right, so now we've covered the base camp first aid kit. There's a, one more item that you, you can or cannot take, depending on how you feel about it, and that is an AED. These never used to even be considered to go on an overlanding trip, but um, now they are now becoming smaller and smaller and less and less expensive you can actually buy them online now. This is by no means a necessary item, but if you are going on long trips, very out of the way, and have an older population in your trip, they're a good thing to have. If somebody does have a cardiac event, one of the main things that saves a, a, a cardiac event is electricity. So something to look into, but by absolutely no means something that you need to spend money on, especially if you're a, a younger traveler. One thing that we also need to talk about is training and familiarization. You can have this great kit that is in your truck or in your Jeep, and it's back in that back window in the place where the IFAC lives, and it's been there for years and you've never touched it. And that's not a good thing because you really don't remember what is in there, where it is in there, or if things like the tape is even still sticky. So it's a good thing, you know, just as you're checking your vehicle, kind of one of those mental things, oh, it's time to change the oil. I think it's also time to go look at my IFAC. Open it up, touch everything. Actually open it up, go through, unzip, touch things, look at things. This is doing several things. It's keying in your mind where everything is. So then in an emergency, when you open it up, that muscle memory is gonna go, oh yeah, I remember where that is. So touch it, look at it, pull things out. Make sure that the rubber gloves or the nitrile gloves are, are still stretchy, that they're not brittle from the heat and the heat cold, heat cold. 
Make sure if you do have medications in there that they haven't expired. Just go through and touch everything. And then think to yourself, do I remember how to use these items? Do I remember how to use this tourniquet? And if the answer is no, take it out, play with it, re-familiarize yourself with it. And then get the level of training that you're comfortable getting. If that's taking a basic first aid kit at the local Red Cross, if it's going and taking an EMT class for a semester at a local college, train yourself so that you do know how to use all of these basic things to whatever level that you want to use. There's one other little thing I'd like to talk about and it's a, a very frequently forgotten about part of your first aid kit and that's communications or comms. So you've got all these cool tools, somebody's injured, you've used these cool tools, they're now stable. Okay, now what do we do? Is the helicopter coming? Is the ambulance coming? Communications are key. And especially nowadays, we have such a wide breadth of ability to communicate with the outside world and get help to the scene of this accident. You've got satellite, you've got all your in-reach, you've got ham radio. Think about that. That should be an intricate part of your first aid mentality is not only the gear, but how do I communicate the need for help, the need for somebody to come in and get me or this person out of where I am to a higher level of care. So I hope you guys have learned something today, learned how to maybe the thought process behind building your first aid kit, behind getting the training that you need to use these first aid kits. And I hope you had fun, enjoy overlanding out there in this beautiful world.